introduction to Amazon Cognito user pools. Hello everyone, my name is Ankush Jain and in this video we will learn about Amazon Cognito user pools and its key features. This is the third video of this series and if you have not watched the previous videos then please do watch. I have provided the links of all the videos in the description below. So let's get started. So Amazon Cognito has two important features. One is the user pool and identity pool. You can also see here Amazon Cognito user pool and identity pool. In this uh, in this series, we are just dealing with user pools. We are not dealing with identity pool. So let's first understand what is a user pool. So for every application that you build, you, that you build, you need users, and uh, you have to store the user information somewhere. So if you are implementing a custom solution, then you might be storing the user information in uh, MySQL or DynamoDB or any other RDBMS or NoSQL database. But uh, that is something that you don't, you don't need to do if you are using Amazon Cognito. So you can create users, you can store uh, all your users in Amazon Cognito user pool. And also Amazon Cognito user pool provides you all the functionality which an identity server provides such as OAuth, OIDC support and uh, I mean all, uh, all the latest protocols that are involved in identity management uh, in modern days. So that is something a user pool does. Uh, so it is basically a, an identity server uh, which is managed by AWS. Second thing is identity pool. Identity pool is something uh, which we are not going to use, but uh, is used to access AWS services. Now, you, you can say that we can access AWS services from uh, our APIs, uh, but this is a little different. If you want to access AWS services from your mobile application or JavaScript application, then how, how would you do that? So identity pool provides temporary credentials that allow you to access your AWS, uh, AWS services such as S3, GraphQL, APIs, DynamoDB directly from your mobile application or your JavaScript application. And these those credentials are uh, user specific and they are temporary credentials. They works for one minute or so, two minutes. So, I mean, you can specify the timeout, but that's something which identity pool does. However, we are not going to do uh, deal with identity pool in this series, but that is something that you should be aware of. Then uh, here are some of the key features of the Cognito user pool. So first is uh, manage users and groups. You can uh, manage uh, n number of users there and you can create groups uh, and you can add users in group and you know manage that kind of permissions, uh, role-based authentication and that and all that. Then you can uh, you get all these functionality out of the box, sign in, sign up, forgot password and other because they provide SDK and hosted UI and UI components. So uh, you just need to plug and play. So you get all those common functionality. This is AWS managed and serverless. So you, you don't need to manage any server. AWS is managing everything and uh, it is serverless, which is very cheap and no custom database required. So you just go here and click click uh, create user pool you have to follow a, a step or uh, certain steps in wizards and then you are done serverless as i said it is very cheap uh, i i have not uh, i don't know how many users but i think up to five lakh users you don't have to pay anything or maybe i am wrong but you can check the aws documentation on that front uh, Another thing is identity federation with Google, Facebook, SAML, Open ID provider. So if you create a user pool and you create a login page on your application and you want that the users should be uh, should be able to authenticate themselves from Google, Facebook, or any other third party provider which supports OAuth or Open ID or SAML in case. So you can just do that with uh, a Cognito user pool. The user will authenticate himself will, uh, with on Google, then will return to Cognito. And, uh, a user uh, in Cognito will be created uh, for that federated identity and then the user can log in into your application. So all these things are very easy to set up with the uh, Amazon Cognito. It provides multi-factor authentication. Uh, it can be used to secure APIs because it is an identity server. So we can create client app, 
uh, and we can use client id client secret and then create jwd token out of that and then we can validate those tokens so all those those stuff can be done it is a complete identity identity server provides sdk and ui components for all program pro, popular pro, programming languages it also provide hosted ui what is hosted ui so if you search on google amazon cognito cognito hosted ui and just go inside images so you can see so you don't have to construct your ui for such functionality by your own everything is done uh, you just need to configure and you will get a nice looking ui like that so that you can use in your applications now i'm closing this and you uh, okay what is amazon cognito so the similar services are like azure ad b2c auth0 octa dotnet identity server which is an open source so all these are the similar services and uh, solves the same purpose here is an image which basically shows uh, how does it work so you your mobile application or web application just go to cognito cognito redirect them to a cognito hosted ui or if you are using identity identity federation then it redirect you to google or third party then you authenticate yourself there they just you know cognito checks whether you have verified yourself on these third party platforms or not then or if if you are not using identity federation you just provide username password here on cognito cognito validates it so once the user or identity is verified you cognito will issue a J, jwt token the the jot token or jwt token is returned to the, your web application or mobile web application mobile application your mobile application then use this jot token to uh, you know will send these J, jwt token in further api request okay so yeah that i was talking about so this is the workflow uh, i i will come to it but let's understand uh, what are the api gateway security so api gateway in aws has three layers of security not three layers of security sorry uh, for that there are three types uh, or three ways in which we can secure an api gateway so one is we can use lambda authorizer another is we can use cognito authorizer and third is we can use aws credential aws im which leverages signature v4 so we don't need to dive into that now now but yeah the, these are the three ways we can uh, we can secure our apis which are using amazon api gateway so if you are using amazon cognito and want to secure uh, your api so you will use cognito authorizer and what it will do as i said uh, you get authenticate your authenticate yourself with amazon cognito user pool you get a jwt token and once the token is received you will pass that token along with your rest api in authorization header api gateway you will attach a cognito authorizer uh, in api gateway that will basically validate the incoming token and if you are uh, you if you have a valid token then the request will be forwarded to the backend lambda function so that we will see we will practically see how we can create a cognito authorizer uh, uh, in you know to secure our apis uh, but yeah this this is a theory lecture and i just wanted to cover the basics what is cognito user pool what are some of the key features of it and how how we can secure our apis using cognito user pool now i think yeah in the next lecture we will be creating a cognito user pool and where we will be creating a user and group and we will also be creating an app client uh, that uh, that we will use to secure our apis uh, in uh, .NET apis so yeah i hope you have liked this lecture and i will see you in the next video thank you